Hello, I'm Cindy Arenberg seltzer President and CEO of the Children's Services Council of Broward County. Welcome to another edition of Future First, Focus on Broward's Children. Florida is one of the most attractive places to live. The numbers show it. Even in difficult times, more people move here than leave. While much of the world envies our gorgeous year-round weather, it can also create dangers that put children's lives at risk. The typically high temperatures and many bodies of water are two elements that create dangers, especially for the youngest among us. Joining me today to discuss how to protect children during the hot summer months and beyond are Broward County Commissioner Lois Wexler, a longtime champion of issues related to child safety, Ken Rowland, Recreation and Aquatic Coordinator at the City of Fort Lauderdale Parks and Recreation Department and President of the Swims Foundation, Janice Carter, Director of Community Relations and Resource Development at the Early Learning Coalition of Broward County, and Jay Sanford, Manager of Swim Central. Welcome, all of you. Thanks Thank for you, being Thank here. You. Welcome. Commissioner, I want to start with you because both in your role as Commissioner and before that as a school board member, you really were a champion for both of the things we're going to talk about today look before you lock and swim central. Why is that so important to you? Well, nothing is more important than saving a child's life and educating the family regarding safety and keeping children safe. Um, even as a county commissioner, uh, my colleagues kind of look at me as you're the one that does kids issues. And so you, 12 years as a school board member, I guess I'm labeled with that until I'm no longer in office. And you know what? I'm very, very proud of the role that both the school board and the county commission have provided in this community in order to advocate for children. And you've done a great job being that child advocate. So at the, at the county commission, we'll start with look before you lock. Great. Tell us about the, the new ordinance and why that was important. Certainly. First of all, Florida is fourth in the nation, which is a statistic that we really don't want to be for hypothermic deaths for children. And I, I, I would like to be zero. I'd like to be none. And about a year and a half, two years ago, there was a tragedy in a, from a daycare center in Sunrise. And the uh, tragedy occurred in Tamarack where a youngster was left in a van. Commissioner Lieberman and I both sponsored an ordinance which became effective last December, December of 2012. That ordinance was two-pronged. It was directed at those daycare centers that transport children and the general public. And as you know, we, the county, couldn't do it alone, but we do, we, we do go out and do inspections of licensed daycare centers. So now, as of July 1st, 2013, there was a six-month grace period. Every daycare center that transports six or more children must have an alarm in their vehicle. And that alarm is to save lives. When that car is shut off, when that vehicle is shut off, the driver will have to either, if it's a bus, go in the back of that bus and shut it off manually or if it's a van, through the door that opens and closes on the side, do that manually as well. So it's no longer just get out of my vehicle, not look and see, and make sure that there's a precious cargo sleeping in the back seat. As you know, the other equally as important is the accidents that a parent, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, a sometime caregiver that's not used to transporting the youngster in the back seat and the little one is sound asleep. This happened in Boca last year. And the dad never, never imagined that something like that, a professional, would ever happen to him. What a tragedy. The child was sleeping in the car seat. He went inside, did his business for the day, and at, towards the end of the day remembered that he had his child strapped into the car seat. So this approach is two-pronged, not just at the the daycare centers, but also at the public. And we're distributing through the general public, through PTA, through uh, pediatricians, through daycare centers, decals. Look before you lock. Reminding parents, reminding caregivers, please look in the back seat before you leave your car. As the mother of a six-year-old, I know, I mean, 
throughout her life, and certainly when she was a baby, that was something that haunted me. So I have that sticker prominently on my window. Thank you. And I want to challenge uh, the general public to put those stickers on and to think when you see that, to look in the back seat of someone else's car, because you may save a life. We have to remind the parent, but we also have to take some responsibility in that village. And the same thing with the alarms in the childcare van. Those are really, really loud. So if you hear that blaring, you need to look in that van and make sure that there are no children there because you could save a life. And that partnership, the leadership of the County Commission was fantastic. And it's also a partnership with the Children's Absolutely. Services Council and the Early Learning Coalition, yes. Janice. Mm -hmm. Why was it important to the Early Learning Coalition? Well, we felt it was important because, again, we care about the children in this county. We care about the early care and education of these kids in the county. Uh, and we thought it was um, behoove us to be a partner in this endeavor. Um, we care about the safety of the children. And so what we decided to do was come in and, do, and, and contribute some funds to help child care providers in the community who needed to purchase these alarms in their vans to be able to afford the cost of that. We uh, put some money into the pot along with the other partners in this endeavor so that they can um, uh, apply for assistance to help get these alarms in the van because it's hugely important. So no child care center can say that there was a barrier they couldn't afford the alarm. Exactly. And it's effective July 1. July 1st, it becomes part of the checklist of our um, um, professionals that go out and do the licensing of daycare centers. Mm -hmm. And any daycare center that transports six or more children must have this as part of their requirement. Just like they have to have hot running water, mm -hmm. um, they have to have this alarm in their vehicle. So we want to make sure I mean, child care licensing is going to be checking on that, but parents too should be making okay, sure yes. that their child care center has, has done the what they're supposed to do mm -hmm. and don't let your child on any vehicle that doesn't have it, that isn't equipped. And it's through our partnerships, mm -hmm. through the Early Learning Coalition, your leadership, and um, Commissioner Gunsberger, who is our liaison to and our member on the Children's Services Council. She was out, you know, out there supporting this from the get-go and the county's um, dollars. We each contributed our equal amount mm -hmm. to about $155,000 total is the pot of dollars. And each um, um, application is up to $400 reimbursement right. that a um, applicant can get back mm -hmm. from the daycare center. And the good news is, is that the majority of the larger daycare centers in Broward County already have them installed. Yeah. So pretty much this focus is going to be on those um, MAPA operations, which was exactly the situation in Sunrise where it was mm -hmm. out of somebody's home. Yeah. They were a licensed provider yes. and they had a van, but they did not have this alarm within it. So just thinking that that would have saved this youngster's life really gives me some hope. Nothing is foolproof, but the more the more things you can put in place to jog people's memory, to get them thinking, the better. Absolutely. Which is the same thing with drowning prevention. I want to bring my gentleman into this conversation because when it comes to water safety, again, nothing is foolproof, but the more barriers, the more training that you can do, the better you have of saving a child's life. That's right, Cindy. We, we, you're, you're never going to be able to waterproof or drownproof a child, but what you can do is you can put in barriers in place that are going to give you extra time. Um, a door alarm leading from the back of the house to a backyard pool allows you to know if a child has exited the door. A fence between the pool and the house with a gate that is not accessible to the child that keeps the child from entering in the water. If they're going to figure out how to get over that gate or through that gate or somewhere else, it's going to take them some time. So you're giving yourself extra time. So, and then learning CPR. If you're a parent and you have a backyard pool, or even if you don't have a backyard pool, learning CPR, and not just the adult classes, but the child classes, something that is going to be applicable to your situation. You learn that so that if something 
should happen, you can start providing care for your child as soon as possible. And that's going to give you extra time and that's going to help give your child a better chance at recovery should something like that happen. So there are many things and, and in the industry and as Ken is, knows this, we're trying to make things safer. We never want to say that we've made things safe because you can have everything in place and something still could happen. Mm -hmm. So the goal is to make them safer. Educate the family, educate the children, um, do the water safety lessons that allow a child to self-rescue. We've had many anecdotal um, stories of a child that's fallen into a pool when their parents weren't looking and they snuck back into the house and were getting out of their wet clothes and the parents finally caught them, how'd you get wet? Well, I fell in the pool. Well, what'd you do? Well, I did what they taught me in class and I rolled over on my back and I got to the side. I got out and I thought I got away with it, but apparently I didn't. So, mm -hmm. you know, those are what the situations that we're trying to prevent as we can, but allow them to have a happy ending rather than a tragic ending, which here in Florida and especially here in Broward, with 20% of Broward County being underwater, more often than not we get the tragedies uh, that happen. Just last year we lost uh, nine children under the age of five mm -hmm. in Broward County to drownings and uh, the situations were, were devastating. It's a devastating to the family, it's devastating to the EMTs that have to come and provide care, the officers on site, the entire neighborhood, and the t entire community at large. There's never a single victim in an instance like this. So we're doing what we can to, to try and prevent that. You know, one of the things that's always stuck with me, because uh, I know some of these tragedies happen when there's a lot of adults around and everybody thinks someone else is watching. Mm -hmm. and. And so I remember them say, like, we used to give out tags. I'm the one, you know, if you're wearing the tag, you're the one responsible. Even if you don't have the tag, to, to make sure you say, Commissioner, I'm going into the house. You're watching Johnny now. Uh, that, that can make a difference in the consciousness. And it sure does. We've, uh, we've, we do offer water watcher tags to parents, anybody that wants one. Grandparents, again. Uh, you discuss the secondary caregivers that sometimes, you know, lose track of the kids because they don't, they're not used to having them. And um, like you mentioned, we had a party up in Coral Springs last year where a child drowned within sight and hearing of 10 adults who were there at the side of the pool engaged in their own conversations because nobody took responsibility for watching the kids that were in the water. The water watcher tags are a good tool. Um, they're not the only tool. You know, alarms are not expensive. Alarms are $10 for a, a set of door alarms. You can buy them at, at your local big box store. And it gives you that, just that knowledge. Because again, with the drownings that we've had, 70 to 90% of them, the parents thought the child was still inside the house. So the children are getting outside the house without the parents knowing. They're very sneaky. They are sneaky. That's, what, that's why they're children. 